We're gonna go into all the keys behind lower body strength training for volleyball, and we're gonna start right now. Long legs, knee pain, lower back issues, rolled ankles. These are all consistent themes with volleyball players. We've got athletes that are gonna be 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", women that are walking around at six feet. I remember walking around at Penn State University and looking at the women's volleyball team and the men's volleyball team and thinking, these athletes look like they're walking around on stilts. How do they stay healthy? They're involved in a sport that is extremely explosive. It's very highly reactive. There's gotta be a lot of coordination and a lot of volleyball players might struggle with joint integrity, with joint stability. They do tend to roll their ankles when they're coming down. They, they might land on somebody or they might just be in a bad position. And they do tend to have a little bit of patellar tendonitis because of what's happening when they're jumping all the time, when they're grounding on that jump. And that brings us to the point of what we have to do with strength training. We have to train volleyball players to create stability throughout their knee joint, to create stability throughout their hip and ankle joint. They need to be mobile, they need to be extremely explosive, but they need that joint stability so that they can handle the high volume that they go through when they're jumping all the time, when they're landing, when their body is taking that power and that's gonna take us into those key factors. We have to train volleyball players bilaterally, we have to train them unilaterally, and we have to focus on every single movement that's gonna protect and stabilize those key joints. Again, ankles, knees, lower back, and of course, we do wanna get into a little bit of shoulder work, but when we're training specifically for lower body work, that's where we're gonna be focusing. Okay, so first, right off the bat, if we're training bilaterally, we wanna think about working in this plane where we have two legs grounded, okay? That takes us into Front squats, zombie squats, that's gonna be our first key movement that we wanna focus on with volleyball players. If we use a front squat or a zombie squat, it's going to improve dynamic trunk control. It's gonna keep that posture more vertical. It's also gonna help with long-limbed lifters who struggle with squatting. Typically in a front-loaded position, an athlete who is a volleyball player or a basketball player or a really tall wide receiver, anybody who is over 6'2", six, 6'3", six, it's a little bit easier on their knees to front squat or even to zombie squat. And that's where I like to do this with a slower eccentric and we might even work to a 12 to 16 inch box depending on how long their tibia is. So utilize front squats, zombie squats to improve that lower back mobility, to improve that ankle mobility and that slow eccentric is also gonna help create that co-contraction throughout the knee joint, which is gonna make it a little bit more stable. Utilize front squats once or twice a week, depending on what time of year it is and what that knee issue is that they might have. Make sure that if they do have some knee pain, it's an even slower eccentric and you can control that balance out of the bottom or just use that box to go four or five second eccentric, sit on that box and then drive up fast. But front squats, zombie squats, great bilateral exercise to utilize to increase that lower body strength for volleyball players. Stepping into that unilateral world, we're gonna go right into backward sled pull. So one of the key factors that we have to think about when you're training a volleyball player is that we need that joint integrity all around the knee. If we can improve that quad strength, that's going to lead to a ton of stability and that's gonna help a lot with any issues from that chronic jumping, okay? So backward sled pull, you can utilize this with a harness around your waist. You can utilize this where you're walking backwards and you have your hands holding onto something. Now what I like to see is a little bit of hip flexion. So it's almost where our hips will sit back a little bit while our torso will stay a little bit more upright, just a little bit more upright and then that's gonna to lead to that top range extension. That top range extension from the knee when we're pulling backwards is where we're gonna see that joint become much more stable. That's gonna be training a little bit more of the VMO and that's gonna help absorb that force when these athletes are grounding. The other factor behind training unilaterally, now we can really see for each specific athlete which side is taking a little bit more of the brunt force when they're jumping? Are they typically gonna be jumping from one foot or two feet? Most of the time with volleyball players, they are jumping off of two feet, but they're still gonna favor one side over the other. So when you work unilaterally, 
you can see, okay, so this athlete takes a lot of their force and they put it onto that left side because that's where they're, they tend to be a little bit stronger, but that's leading to a little bit of an overuse issue. So then when you're working unilaterally, you can focus on those sides a little bit more during the eccentric, which might help prevent some of that tendinopathy. So backward sled pulls, you can do this for, for distance. So maybe five sets of 30 meters. You could do this timed five sets of five minutes. Anything that's something along those lines, it's gonna increase the overall blood flow around the quad, around the knee joint, and improve overall joint stability. That next bilateral movement that we're gonna get into is gonna be the barbell RDL. Okay, so when we're training for strength specific work with volleyball players, remember, we're not talking about technical coordination, we're not talking about explosive movements specific to volleyball, we're talking about just strength work. So I wanna pick movements that are either gonna help technical coordination, so a barbell RDL, that's gonna help improve a clean, it's gonna help improve a snatch. That's gonna lead to greater power output, but also, if we have taller individuals, their back might be a little stiff, their, their hips and their hamstrings might be a little bit tight. They might struggle to get into deeper positions, and that's where the barbell RDL comes into play, is that if we can lengthen their hamstrings, if we can lengthen their lower back, if we can try to target their posterior chain, that's gonna help improve their anterior muscular sequence here with the front squats and combine that with that posterior chain work and the barbell RDL to make the whole entire body a little bit more stable. But also, this is gonna be a great supplemental exercise that's gonna help improve snatches, cleans, and those are the big movements that's gonna increase their vertical jump, that's gonna increase their touch point, and that's gonna transfer really, really well. So I would do barbell RDLs once a week, but you can do higher volume. You could sit there and go four sets of nine, okay, and then two drop sets where you're hitting 12 to 15 reps, and that's really gonna light up their hamstring. Do this in the off season to try and improve that posterior chain. And then when you're in season, you might hit that for five sets of five to seven reps. Unless you've got games coming up, you could just do three sets, nice and easy to really target that entire hamstring, glute, and lower back region. Another great unilateral exercise that volleyball players could smash is gonna be overhead walking lunges. Now, again, I know that this is a lower body strength training video, but when we're walking overhead, if we've got a plate overhead, say a 10 kilo plate or a 15 kilo plate, that's going to force us to be a little bit more stable in our shoulder girdle. Okay, so we're going to have an isometric muscular action in our shoulder girdle. That means our rhomboid is going to be a little bit more active. Our lats are going to be a little bit more supportive. That's a key factor when we're doing those overhead lunges. That's also going to trigger a little bit more trunk control while we're walking. Also, when we're doing unilateral work, if we think about lunges, we can do forward walking lunges, we can do backward walking lunges, we can figure out, is this athlete way more quad dominant? Are they more hamstring dominant? Where do they have pain? Where do they have issues? How can we stabilize their hip and their knee with these walking lunges? And that's where you can do a little bit more work walking forward, then walk backwards with a little slower eccentric and keep that plate overhead. That's gonna improve a whole bunch of different functionality and it's gonna stabilize their ankle joint as well because of the flexion that's going into that walking aspect. So overhead walking lunges, this is an excellent movement. You can utilize a little bit more weight in the off season than during the in season period. Lighten up that load and just work on the mobility and the actual stabilization that comes from hitting these lunges over long periods of time. Five sets of seven on each side, or again, just similar to the backward sled pull. Five sets of 30 meters, and that's gonna be a good distance to cover as a volleyball player to improve that overall strength in the lower body. Before we get into that last key exercise that's gonna help improve the entire posterior chain, and the ankles. If you need help with your programming and your periodization, click on the link down below. You can head over to garagestrength.com. You can pick up our strength training program that we've designed specifically for volleyball. We've taken this, we've taken all these concepts and we put it into a program to help you improve your strength training for volleyball. And that takes us right into split squats with our heel elevated on a slant board. So this is a very, very difficult movement. It's going to help with overall mobility in that split squat position. It's gonna help open up our groin, our adductors, our hip ad and abductors. It's gonna help target the posterior chain. It's gonna help target the quads. And when we're on the slant board, I wanna see just the forefoot on the slant board. I want the whole rest of the foot, the heel coming out and the toes will be grabbing while the heel stays elevated. So our Achilles tendon is gonna be lighting up from the isometric muscular action. That's gonna create a lot more stability all around that ankle joint, 
while we're improving those positions in our hip and in our posterior chain. So split squat, heel elevated on a slant board. I recommend doing this as warm-ups, okay? So if you're going into practice, you could do this to really wake up the ankle. You can do this to wake up that lower back and the hips. And in the off season, you can do this exercise with dumbbells, with a plate overhead, just once a week from a loaded perspective. But again, this is a great movement that you can play around with to try to really stabilize the ankle. So remember, when we're training lower body strength work for volleyball, we've got to improve ankle stability, knee stability, lower back mobility. That's where all these movements come into play. If you need help, head over to garagestrength.com and pick up our volleyball strength training program today. And if you want more content, around volleyball-based training. Click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.